What's, what's really frustrating to me and, and some of us that are, are working in the, in the water space, the, the quality and quantity space, is the criticism that we've been receiving lately through, through the print media, particularly through op-eds, editorials and letters to the editors, and, and the meme being that uh, ECAN is failing, that the Canterbury Water Management Strategy is failing, um, that we're achieving nothing and we're going backwards. Um, I just really want to highlight um, what is five years of work in, in the local community where we've had true collaboration. We, we've been out to the communities, uh, to groups, whether they be the mothers' groups, farmers, environmentalists, runanga, uh, you name it. We, we've met with hundreds and hundreds of people getting their dreams and aspirations, of their dreams and aspirations for the environmental future that they want to live in. And we've taken that information back, we've, we've put it into models, we've worked through scenarios and, and understood what the implications of those dreams and aspirations are. And then we've taken it back to those same folk and said, these are your aspirations, these are your dreams, this is what it will cost for you, for your communities, are you happy with that? And ultimately through that process, we've landed at a space where the people in the community have accepted the place they want to land, the environmental improvements that we're putting in place, and are happy with the cost to them and, and their communities. It is really hard work in working in collaboration and because for every action there's, there's an equal and opposite reaction in a sense. So, so what achieves a good outcome in one space can be, can be negative in the other. So working through that we, we ended up with our zone implementation programme, followed on through the, the hearing process to variation to what we now call the Selwyn Waihora Plan. I think um, we cannot ignore the enormity of the work associated with doing that and bringing the community together. I can't emphasise enough bringing the community together to, to achieve the outcome that we have. So I guess the, the key actions that have fallen out of the, the, the regulatory process are that we have nitrogen and phosphorus limits on farms. There will be farm environment plans, there will be consents, ensuring that those farms and those farmers um, follow out the, the, the program that's put in front of them. By 2017, all farms will need their farm environment plans. By 2017, all farms will need to be operating at good management practice on their farms. So that's looking at things about nitrogen loss, phosphorus loss, microbial loss, biodiversity, good farm practices, not over irrigating, all those kinds of things. And 2017 is not far away. We've got a cultural landscape values management area placed around Te Waihora, bringing in the values that are so dear to Naitahu and, and the Runanga groups with some associated values that, that we need to implement in our farm plans around Wahitonga and, and Wahitapu and, and good management practices. Um, something that, that wasn't there before and is coming into play. We've got government, Naitahu, Ikan, Fonterra investing $10 million in, in upgrades in, in Te Waihora, looking at restoration projects. Projects. We've got restoration within the zone committee um, biodiversity plan, uh, $500,000 spent in the zone or attached to the zone and, and allocated. That's huge money going into the zone. It's a big area, but, but real things are happening. So I guess just to summarise, um, to say that nothing's happening in this zone is, is, is just not true. Um, we are at the beginning, um, the walker is coming about, we accept that we need change, we're putting that change in place but it will take time and it needs time. 